This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Ananda Alert activated for missing 16-year-old. An Ananda Alert has been activated for 16-year-old Kadujo Wilson of Whitehall Avenue, Kingston 8, who has been missing since Friday, July 8. According to the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Communications Unit, Wilson is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 152 centimeters, or 5 feet tall. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that the teen was last seen on Burke Lane, Kingston 8, at about 5 p.m. She was wearing a white blouse and black jeans. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Kadudra Wilson is being asked to contact the Constant Spring Police at 876-924-1421. Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. December trial for correctional officer accused of smuggling contraband into prison. A correctional officer accused of smuggling contraband into the Horizon Adult Remand Center last year is to stand the trial on December 1. Denzel Wint had his bill extended on Tuesday when he appeared in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. Mr. Wint is charged with introducing contraband into a penal institution and the possession of ganja. Investigators reported that on May 3, Mr. Wint entered the remand center. Before he could be searched, he allegedly ran into a bathroom and threw an object through a window. The object reportedly contained the ganja. Mr. Wint was handed over to the Kingston West Police. Family of Steve Edo, who fell from ship at the Kingston Wharves, raises questions about safety measures. The family of the stevedore who fell from a cargo ship at the berth 8 Kingston Wharves on Tuesday night has raised the questions about whether adequate safety measures were in place which could have prevented the mishap. It was reported that the stevedore, who had been identified as 38-year-old Scott Banbury, slipped, hit his head, and fell into the water. Response teams have been conducting search operations However, Mr. Banbury has not been found. His brother, Cranston Craig, on Wednesday night told the news that his family is still in the dark on the circumstances which led to the incident. I have not received any call from the police station. I have not received any call from the company to which he was employed. And it's still hanging that at now almost the same time that this happened yesterday, there's still no real formal official answers and he still has not been found. Were there safety protocols? Um, is, was there a guardrail in place for his protection should something like that happen? Is there a safety harness? Is there a life vest? Is there a on-the-spot search and rescue um, protocol in place? What exactly happened? At this point in time, I can say that my family does not know and we need answers. Were there video cameras that record work that happens at that part of the harbor? We would like to know. Brownstone Councillor cleared of fraud and corruption charges. Councillor for the Brownstone Division, Kim Brown Lawrence, was yesterday cleared of fraud and corruption charges by the Integrity Commission. Mrs. Brown Lawrence made the revelation at the St. Anne Municipal Corporation meeting this morning. The Brownstone Division Councillor was being investigated by the Integrity Commission following the Caribbean Maritime University scandal. Brown Lawrence was arrested following a pre-dawn raid on her home in the division in October 2019. She was charged along with former Education Minister Royal Reed, Caribbean Maritime University President Professor Fritz Pinock, Reed's wife Sharon and their daughter Sherelle. The accused were arrested for allegedly defrauding the Ministry of Education and the CMU of millions of dollars. It was reported that she had accepted funds and fixed the roads with money allegedly channeled from the CMU. Questions raised regarding arrest of Jamaican wanted man in Cayman. News has emerged that a Jamaican wanted man who was nabbed in Cayman on Friday was briefly released by Caymanian police before being rearrested for minor drug offenses. However, prosecutors in the British Overseas Territory insist that the murder accused, who has been linked to the recent violence in Spanish Town St. Catherine, never left her custody. According to a report in the Cayman Compass newspaper, 
Questions were raised in court on Tuesday over how the arrest was handled and why the drug charges against the fugitive, who has been identified as 30-year-old Rudolph Shaw, were not pursued. The news first reported that Mr. Shaw was arrested on Friday after a brief chase during which he rammed a police vehicle with the car he was driving. Mr. Shaw was initially arrested on suspicion of illegal landing and taken into custody at the detention center in Fairbanks, Georgetown. Though he is wanted for murder in Jamaica, the charge against him in Cayman was initially an immigration offense. At Tuesday's court hearing, Mr. Shaw's attorney demanded answers on why her client had been kept in custody beyond the time limit for him to be charged or released. The Jamaican fugitive was remanded and is expected to return to court in the coming weeks. In a statement on Wednesday, the Jamaica Constabulary Force said Rudolph Shaw was wanted in connection with multiple murders and the several shootings in the St. Catherine North and the South Police Divisions. The JCF said Mr. Shaw managed to elude capture before leaving the island by boat. Wanted man charged with St. Mary murder A man who was wanted for murder committed in St. Mary last May has been charged by the police. 27-year-old Sadri Bori, otherwise called the Bori Boy of Islington in the parish, was charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition on Tuesday after he turned himself into the police. His court date is being finalized. The murder happened on May 5, 2021. The police report that about 4.50 p.m., the deceased 56-year-old Randy Thompson of Friendship District in Islington was standing along a roadway when the now-accused exited from a Toyota Axio motor car and opened gunfire hitting him several times in the upper body. The police were alerted and on their arrival, Thompson was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. An investigation was launched and Bury was later listed as wanted by the St. Mary Police in January 2022. Agriculture Minister Intensifies Efforts to Curb Predial Larceny The Minister of Agriculture and the Fisheries has intensified its efforts to curb predial larceny with its recent staging of predial larceny sensitization workshop sessions for police officers across all divisions. According to a release, the latest workshop was held under the theme Taking a Zero-Tolerance Approach to Predial Theft, Prevention, Compliance and Enforcement at the Grandiosa Hotel Conference Room in St. James on Wednesday, July 13. During the workshop, Minister of Agriculture and the Fisheries, Pernell Charles Jr., called for a united front in defeating predial larceny and the farm theft, which was labeled as a national security issue, a food security issue and a public health issue. Unity is strength and we need a united force if we are going to tackle this very serious issue of predial larceny, the minister said. Predial larceny is the theft of agricultural produce. It hampers the growth and expansion of legal production and productivity in the sector and encourages increased imports to fill the gaps. I really want to express how much I appreciate the level of importance that the officers in this workshop have placed on being sensitized and upskilled around this important issue. Food security is the number one issue for everybody around the world right now, and you play an important part in ensuring that every boy and girl and mother and father in Jamaica can get food on their table, Charles Jr. told officers and the presenters who participated in the workshop. Noting that food security is the number one issue in the world right now, the minister said that predial larceny is one of the greatest challenges in expanding the agriculture sector and bringing in more investment so that the country and the region can be food secure. The minister has been implementing varying initiatives to counter the incidences of predial larceny, including legislative amendments and the strengthening of animal traceability through the national identification and the traceability system. Greater awareness and strengthened the enforcement of Jamaica Constabulary Force initiatives in predial larceny investigation, prevention and risk reduction is one of the strategies the ministry has implemented to tackle the crime. In 2021-2022, approximately 101 police officers received the training in how to effectively investigate predial larceny cases and prepare case files. 
This resulted in 102 arrests being made with over 70 animals recovered and or returned to their owners. Meanwhile, National Prairie Larceny Prevention Officer Superintendent Oral Pasco praised the sensitization workshops, which he said have proven to be informative for JCF members. We're going great so far, and a lot of the officers would have learned a lot more than they know in terms of sensitization and to bolster their compliance and enforcement efforts in the whole sector. For example, fisheries, all police officers and the fishing inspectors have been briefed on the Fisheries Act of 2018, and most the police officers, this is the first time they knew of that, so that is the level we're going, he said. We're going right across the spectrum, butchers the regulations, their role in butchering, transportation of agricultural produce, registration, and so on. So it's a comprehensive approach of all the offenses relating to predial larceny and the fisheries regulation, Pasco continued. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.